If you want to play on the varsity team, coaches need to want you. They, they are getting hundreds of applications every year, and they're picking the right players. Not the best players, the right players. There's a school that I spoke to that had... It's an exciting time. We're looking at prep schools. Now, that is a very exciting and stressful time for everyone, especially the fact that you're trying to find a spot to play for next year. And it's not just walk in, pay, I'm on the team. It's not that simple. If you want to play on the varsity team, coaches need to want you. They, they are getting hundreds of applications every year and they're picking the right players, not the best players, the right players. Now, let's talk about it. There is a so-called unknown super comp okay it's not an actual conference but we call it super conference because it's the top 10 teams in the country those teams yes they talk to advisors a lot because they don't have time to go out and watch all these players yes they'll show up to certain showcases but at the end of the day they are getting hundreds upon hundreds of applications i will not name names but there's a school that i spoke to that had 58 goalie applications for one spot that is a lot of applications to filter through now that being said there are 10 teams in that super conference that are next level teams right they are the best of the best they have the best hockey players they're always top 10 they're always promoting guys to the best junior leagues and everybody wants to play there but unfortunately not many people get to play there they are super picky for a good reason they have they have the ability to be that picky and they develop the best of the best now the rest of the prep schools if you look at the areas they're in the states the state that they're in the league that they play in most of them are pretty close to each other now high school hockey in minnesota is above the rest that that is facts it's the state of hockey their their development programs are incredible incredible their players it's like they're born with hockey sticks in their hands you go look at a school like edina they're top every year they have guys drafted in the nhl they have guys signed in ushl straight out of high school they have guys committed d1 straight out of high school as juniors seniors like they are next level so super conference minnesota and then a lot of the other good schools very very high-end program are around the boston area massachusetts boston pennsylvania's got some good ones uh, maryland's got some decent programs but a lot of these schools the majority of them are around the boston area and when it comes to a school outside of the super conference the biggest factor you need to look into is where is your kid going to be happy and develop both on and on the ice as a human being for a lot of these kids they're young and it's the first time they're leaving home it's a difficult situation it's a stressful situation and especially for mom mostly mom sometimes dad it's not an easy transition for you you're used to having your boy at home so a lot of the schools I would say if you're looking on a number scale out of 100, academics, they're all between the 75 and 95 out of 100. 100 being the best, one being the worst, they're all between the 75 and 95% of good academic institutions. So there's a very minimal difference between the two. Then it comes down to a preference of, do you want to go to a big school where you're 20 to 30 per class and there's that bigger social aspect? Do you want to go to a private school where you need to have a strict uniform to class every day? They're wearing the full suit, you know, you need special permissions to go walk a certain place to do certain certain activities um do you want more of a social aspect where it's casual certain schools allow you to wear casual and they have certain days where you need to be dressed up do you want to be eight or nine per class so that you have a better relationship with your teacher and you need that extra attention to be successful in the classroom these are all factors that you need to look into it's not as simple as oh this coach wants me if you only have one offer then by all means take it you got one you got nothing else but if you have a couple schools looking at you well then look at the different options see what's available the next thing is looking at the hockey a lot of these programs and i would say the middle tier so not the super conference but the ones right below the, the middle tier program are between 80 and 90 percentile out of that 100 they're really close to each other one year they're 500 one year they're super dominant one year they're under, they're rebuilding one year they're 500 it's it's the same transition so can we rank them honestly it's hard it's hard because every year it changes that middle pack changes every year they can go from a top program dominating in the year after their middle program but they're only a middle program because of their record their coaching staff is still unbelievable they're still promoting their kids their players to the next level kids are still getting a great academic service that's why it comes down to a personal choice you want to make sure that your kid is in a situation where as a hockey player he's got a great coaching staff around him that'll take care of him that'll give him that family aspect like they get in college that'll teach him what he needs to teach you want to make sure he's getting an academic situation where he can succeed if your son struggles and needs a tutor the bigger classrooms is not a good idea those classrooms of eight nine ten kids are great the teacher will know them by name teachers live close to campus they'll give the extra support as much as possible they come to games to support so it's really that family aspect if your kid is smart and doesn't need the attention maybe you can look at the bigger schools give them more of that social aspect the least of the concern is how performing the program is because every year it changes every single year unless you're in that top 10 
top 15 even school. A big part of what you should be looking at is where your son will be put in a situation where they need to develop as a person. The whole point of playing competitive sports is yes, to chase your dreams, but it's to develop skill sets that you take into your real world life after hockey, because we all have a life after hockey. You want to learn skills that you can adapt to the workforce, to your social life, to be successful off the ice. Learning how to be a critical thinker, learning how to talk business, learning how to do your laundry, how to cook, how to do taxes, how to fix things at home, how to navigate in a difficult situation, how to deal with conflicts, how to analyze situations, learning how to interact in big crowds, smaller crowds, learning how to interact with different type of people, introverted, extroverted, different situations, how to communicate. These are all things that are important aspects. You can't just focus on, oh, it's not a top 10 hockey program. There's other aspects that are much more important than that. Remember that at a certain point, no matter how good your kid is, he might not be good enough. He might be a superstar at the prep level. He might be borderline a junior hockey player. He might be a superstar at junior levels, borderline college. So everything he's learning from the game, he needs to be able to transition to the real world, the work ethic, the dedication, the drive, the passion, the, the discipline, most importantly, the discipline. So he needs to be put in a situation where this is possible, where learning all of these things is possible and adapting them to their lives. You want to send your kid off to come back as a grown up. Not as a grown up, as a mature adult, but more mature, more developed. I can't tell you how many of the players we've put in prep school programs that have come home in the summer and the parents call us and go, he's doing his own laundry. He's helping cook. I don't have to tell him to take out the trash. We're having conversations that I didn't think I would have with my kid until he was done playing hockey. Because they were put in a situation where they needed to succeed both on and off the ice and they became grown ups. They grew up. They became adults, mature young men. And that's, that's all you can ask for as a parent because now your kid is succeeding off the ice and is developing into the person you could only dream of. And at the same time, they're chasing their dreams in the best possible way. So when we get asked, what do we look for when we're shopping a prep school? Yes, look at the hockey program, how well they've succeeded on the ice. More importantly, look at where their past players are going. They could be the worst program in the country every year getting absolutely slaughtered. If their players move on to the next level, good spot, it's a good program, hockey wise. Then look at the academic situation, analyze it with your kid. If your kid is a good student, but always needs the extra support, smaller programs are probably better. And last, but most important, look at where your son will be treated in a way that makes him become a young man, gives him response responsibilities where he'll be happy because he's away from home at a young age and where you'll feel comfortable knowing that he's being taken care of. Those are the most important factors. And then after that, the money, because prep school hockey is expensive. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me started on that. It's expensive. But at the end of the day, if you can afford it, it can be very worth it for the success of your child. I hope this really helped you because we get these questions about prep schools all the time. I can't tell you how many times I get a call from a parent saying, hey, we're looking at these prep schools. Can you rank them for me? They're all in the same ranking. The difference is going to be where you feel comfortable how far they are from home and where the kid's going to be happy, right? These are memories that will last forever. This is a journey that everybody at some point needs to stop. So you want to make it the most memorable as possible and not something he'll regret. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the video. Comment down below what you guys want to see more of. The prep school topic is a hot topic for all of you. It's a very, very large topic to talk about and we can go into details if you like, but this is a breakdown of what you should look for when you're looking at prep schools. Have a nice day, everybody.